Hi, this is an introduction into using the CAD measuring tool facility so in order to, to quickly complete a room by room heat loss calculation from the desktop. So um, within the version 2 environment desktop here, um, you can see, um, or dashboard could call it, um, is the submitted surveys, reports in progress, complete reports. Now, let's what we want to do is start a, a CAD survey. Um, so if I click on create new survey here, and on the next step, you will be prompted for a uh, uh, click on the CAD button if you want to use it. So test demo. Um, I'm just going to quickly put in our address for the office. And you can see it populates the, the full address and also the degree day data and uh, the altitude and also the weather weather information as well. If this was a survey that had been submitted from a mobile phone or mobile tablet, the uh, number of rooms and floor area would be populated here. But of course, I'm starting afresh here, completing a uh, a desktop survey. So now on version two, we can see at this stage here, um, we've got add rooms like we had in the previous version. But um, we've got this new button here, measure rooms using CAD. Um, and of course, there's another sort of prompt here, measure rooms uh, using CAD. So um, I could be at the stage now where I could just simply go through and add all the rooms that are in this particular property. Or I can, I can still add the rooms when I'm in this environment. So I'm going to click straight away into measure rooms using CAD. Um, and um, it's asked me to open up a, a drawing. Now, the terminology CAD, you might just by default assume that we can only open up DXF and DWG files. That's not the case. We could open up images and PDFs because because I think the majority of, of, of clients do send through PDF images. So uh, sorry, PDF files, I should say. So um, I'm going to add add a room for the start, the very first one. Uh, I think by memory, the drawing should have. I know it's bedroom one. I'm going to demonstrate in a second. But I can go. The point is I'm, I'm showing here is I could be at a stage where. I simply just want to keep adding all the rooms that are in this property, um, and you can you, your workflow is totally customizable. If you want to start adding rooms first and then and, and then measuring, or do it one by one, totally up to you. But you can see you can quickly toggle the button um, here, so uh, to sh to show and hide the other uh, other rooms. I haven't added any, haven't added any new rooms just yet. So I'm um, going to browse and let's find this PDF drawing, shall we? So there's a plan view. That's the one I wanted. So like many CAD environments, the first step you need to complete is setting your scale. Um, and you can see in the top right hand corner here, this is where we would do that. So, it, so if you're fortunate to have uh, dimensions on the drawing, so I'm going to use, just so you know, as I'm going to zoom in, I'm going to hold down my control button and use the wheel of my mouse. So I'm using the middle wheel. So we've got, we're kind of fortunate we've got dimensions listed here. Um, so we can use that as a scale or we've actually got uh, a scaled um, rule down here as well. So it's up to us what we, what we, can, what we want to use. So let's um, go through and, and sort of scale this up just in a second. We're gonna expand that window. So um, we've got the floor area. So if I wanna go in, zoom in to bedroom one here, um, I can click on the floor area. Now, um, we are slightly going to change this really quickly, but by default, you should have the rectangular area, but we do have this flexible area as well. And that essentially means that if you've got a very complex room, um, instead of drawing rectangles or squares to, to work out to quickly populate the floor area, you can use like this particular feature here and you can essentially, you're drawing around the profile of the area and then it works out. So that's great for complicated uh, surface area rooms um, but uh, certainly in this case we can just use this particular feature the rectangular area now before I start clicking on there and, and measuring I do want to double check the, uh, the the scale I'm going to add a new scale so I'm going to click add new scale I'm going to click calibrate and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to just zoom in a little bit and then I'm going to click there hold hold I'm holding down the left mouse button and then I release Oops, no, I left click, sorry, left click. Um, here, so it, it can default depending on what your, your drawing is, but essentially I need to type in the value that's presented in me there to the units that I want to use. So 4,715, that's in millimetres, So I'm, but I want it in metres, so I'm going to go 4.715, 
and it's really important I select the uh, the appropriate units there. So I know that 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 calibrated line that I've just drawn over the PDF um, is should give me a reading of seven sorry 4.715 meters so I'm happy with that I'm going to click apply so it's kind of customized that now the, please don't click the preset button don't click that radio button however you can click on the precision so if you click on the precision so if I want my um, um, to certain significant figures so there we go I want to have it to that set to that so I can click create so you're happy with the custom radio button is selected there don't click preset but of course select the precision precision um, of your results that you want displayed there so I click create and now you can see the my scale is in the top right hand corner something to be really mindful because in certain cases you might have an engineering drawing that's not only got the plans on it so you might have a PDF that's been sent to you it's got the plan view in a certain scale but in certain size certain certain instances an architect will also have the elevations which is great for measuring windows which you will do but it might be at a ratio a, 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 a 1 to 50 ratio rather than 1 to 100 so the R tool allows you to fluctuate between the two you know the multiple different scales that you have set so just something to be sort of mindful about what scale you want to use for actually recording so I'm happy with that one there um, and then like I said I'm going to start measuring so I click on the floor area um, and then I've got this rectangular area at the top here selected this feature and this is the part where it's super quick so um, essentially we're just going down like that and then click and then go down there a minute and then I go to there and then click that's it so I'm using my left mouse button to, to sort of scroll across so we've got two surface areas here 16.75 meter squared and then 2.44 and fortunately for you guys it populates the total here so the rectangular feature is really uh, useful and it's very fast in in quickly getting the majority of our typical builds where you've got rectangular square rooms uh, and populating the floor area so that's yeah certainly is really sort of like helpful when we come to measuring the external wall lengths uh, if i go to uh, click on the uh, the external wall length here Again, just double check that you're happy with the measurement. So just go on to that scale, sorry, click on the scale that you want. So just, just double check the scale. Um, and then um, I've set, set it to the distance here. So there's, there's, there's lots of different ways you can measure the drawing and it will populate into here. So just be sort of mindful about the, the different options here that you might want to take advantage of. So I can start sort of like uh, drawing here um, arrows on there just to get the perimeter or can you use this button here so I think if I click on the perimeter button for the external wall type and I'm going to go left click and then uh, left click and then right click to accept and then you can see it's got the total value in there so 8.35 um, which is great so I've got that in there um, and if you ever click on sort of the actual the, the ruler again you can just double check to see where that parameter is. So if I jump between the X and the wall type here, I could just about see my green line here um, with the, for the external wall perimeter that I've got measured. Um, and if I click on the ruler here again, I can see my um, my floor area profile there for bedroom one. So um, that's great. Um, I can I'm, obviously I'm going to measure windows from the elevations. Um, I can measure some internal walls, um, uh, the doors, etc. So anything to do with um, the kind of elevation side of things I would need to open up my elevation drawing um, room height in this case is going to be nice and easy so we don't need to measure anything I'm just going to enter 2.4 whoops not 2.4 there we go so and that's done um, uh, so yeah so that's kind of that's very very kind of useful and, and speedy um, if I wanted to open up another drawing in this environment you click on the plus button at the top there um, and you can open up the elevations and, and again scale that make sure you check in the scale um, before you start measuring um, there's also another look, kind of feature that some of you might like if you go to settings you can go into dark mode so if I click on here we've got a cool dark mode and we can change the language so some of you might have noticed that in version 2 uh, we've got the complete version in German so um, that kind of helps for that environment so if I go to English and click there we go so I've got my kind of the dark mode um, and we are also looking at the whole kind of environment being having a dark mode option as well. If I click back, go back and see that light mode there again. 
Um, so if I go to uh, close that down, oops, hang on, reopen that again. Just go to save that, click save. You might find that actually we've, we've done an update to auto save, so you might not need to, you might not see that save button. So just doing an auto save, right? Let's go and do um, the um, ensuite here. Oops, just zoom in. So again, just to remind you guys, I'm using the control button and my middle mouse wheel. Um, so my control button on my keyboard and the middle mouse wheel uh, to zoom in and zoom out. I am going to go to add room and then go to uh, ensuite. There we go, add room. And um, I can go to floor area, click floor area, double check my scale, I want that scale there, so floor area there. Um, and I want to use that feature there. So that's good. So uh, there we go. And I've got my floor. Okay, I've got a little bit. I might want to start that again, but you get the idea. And then next to the wall length as well. Click on the ruler. It's defaulted to that. And I did show you we've got this perimeter, but I will just show you this ruler feature, this distance anyway. Um, I'm, I'm happy with that scale. So then I go to here and then hit that. Uh, so and it's populated it in here as well. Um, internal wall. Um, instead of using that ruler feature, I'm going to use the perimeter feature. I'm happy with that scale there on the right. Just double checking perimeter, um, and then I go to internal walls. So click that there. Oh, left click, and then left click, and then the final click. Remember to do a right click. So go onto the snap snaps to, and then go right click, and then it completes it. And then you can see that it's populated it in there. So. There we go, we've got all that. And then I can go to save. So I'm happy with that. So you can keep going through to all the rooms you, you know. Um, so it's, like I said before, it's up to you whether you want to add all the rooms before you start measuring or you kind of do it one by one. Um, I am going to just add another room. Um, I haven't got this particular example here, but I'm just going to show you the fact that if, uh, for example, this bedroom two was a, if I opened up the section view, did, but, we've got um, rooms with uh, vaulted ceiling. So if I go to bedroom two, just make the assumption, I will probably make another video on that, but just to quickly show you that we do have um, the ability to enter standard room profiles as, as I just demonstrated, but I will create another video for vaulted rooms where you can start measuring um, the different types. So type one, for example, and we've got like a nice sort of profile here. So you can then start to say, okay, I'm gonna measure dimension one, dimension two, and the heights in there, so it's very similar, like the mobile phone environment um, that some of you might be might be used might be used to. So the CAD measuring facility tool is uh, for standard rooms and also for vaulted rooms as well. So give that a go anyway. Um, yeah, thanks for thanks for watching that. Um, to, but just before I finish it, um, I am just going to show you that essentially how to complete it. So imagine we measured all the rooms, etc. So you click finish CAD, um, and then. We are on to the step here, and it's got the the uh, room design temperature, the air change rates, the area the room was built. Obviously, which dictates it dictates those those parameters there. Um, and then um, I go to next, um, and you can see all the values which have been populated here. Um, so that's been that's coming through successfully there. So um, and obviously I'm going to do another lots of more videos anyway. But that this particular um, video is all being focused on using the, the CAD feature anyway. So yeah, thanks for thanks for watching. Oh, maybe we should just do this quickly. If you ever need to revisit it again, and you just and you want to measure more, or make some edits, click the button again, and then it goes back. You takes you back to that environment again. And there you go. Okay, thanks for watching.